Good evening, people of God. Welcome. Welcome all of you to the house of our Father today. The intentions for our Mass was, the intention for our Mass was already announced, but I would like to invite you. Let us place in the hands of God all the personal intentions we have in our hearts too. What you would like to pray for in this Holy Mass. Let us place in the hands of God. Let us do it now. <coughs> And having done that, let us start. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Our Father is very merciful, and we need His mercy. Just for it, since, she, since, since He makes it so attainable for us, let us ask. Let us ask for his forgiveness. Let us do it singing. I will do the first part, and you repeat equal. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. <clears throat> May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to the everlasting life. Amen. And now it's happiness. Let us sing our hymn of glory. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you. We Let us pray. Show favor, O Lord, to your servants, and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace, that made fervent in hope, faith, and charity, they may be ever watchful in keeping your commands. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Take a seat now. Let us listen to the word of God. 
<clears throat> A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord appeared to Abraham by the terebinth of Mamre as he sat in the entrance of his tent while the day was growing hot. Looking up, Abraham saw three men standing nearby. When he saw them, he ran from the entrance of the tent to greet them. And bowing to the ground, he said, Sir, if I may ask you this favor, please do not go on past your servant. Let some water be brought that you may bathe your feet and then rest yourselves under the tree. Now that you have come this close to your servant, let me bring you a little food that you may refresh yourselves and afterward you may go on your way. The men replied, very well, do as you have said. Abraham hastened into the tent and told Sarah, Quick, three measures of fine flour. Knead it and make rolls. He ran to the herd, picked out a tender choice steer, and gave it to a servant who quickly prepared it. Then Abraham got some curds and milk, as well as the steer that had been prepared, and set these before the three men. And he waited on them under the tree while they ate. They asked Abraham, where is your wife, Sarah? He replied, there in the tent. One of them said, I will surely return to you about this time next year. And Sarah will then have a son. The word of the Lord. Thanks, bitch God. <clears throat> not his fellow man, nor takes up a reproach against his neighbor, by whom the reprobate is despised, while he honors those who fear the accepts no bribe against the innocent. One who does these things shall 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, now I rejoice in my sufferings for your sake. And in my flesh, I am filling up what is lacking in the afflictions of Christ on behalf of his body, which is the church, of which I am a minister in accordance with God's stewardships given to me to bring to completion for you the word of God, the mystery hidden from ages and from generations past. But now it has been manifested to his holy ones, to whom God chose to make known the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles. It is Christ in you and hope for glory. It is he whom we proclaim, admonishing everyone and teaching everyone with all wisdom that we may present everyone perfect in Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus entered a village where a woman whose name was Martha welcomed him. She had a sister named Mary who sat beside the Lord at his feet listening to him speak. Martha burdened with much serving, came to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me by myself to do the serving? Tell her to help me. The Lord said to her in reply, Martha, Martha, you are anxious about you are anxious and worried about many things. There is need of only one thing. Martha, actually, Mary has chosen the best part, and it will not be taken from her. The Gospel of the Lord. You can take a seat now. <clears throat> if I had to choose a word to define, to make a synthesis of our liturgy today, this word would be 
hospitality. Hmm? Our liturgy today is showing to us the importance of hospitality, being kind, receiving the ones who are coming, who need, because in them we can receive the, we can receive our God, the Lord Jesus, huh? and we could see two situations very interesting here. In the first one, I call your attention to some details here in the first reading. Well, Abraham was in his tent. To him, the Lord was coming. He saw him. Hmm? But the Holy Scripture go beyond that to say something else to us. Look at, look at that. I read again to you here. The first reading. The Lord appeared to Abraham by the terebinth of Mamre, as he sat in the entrance of his tent. Looking up, Abraham saw three men standing nearby. Hmm? The Holy Scripture is trying to say something to us here. It's trying to show to us, this is the book of Genesis, the first book of our Holy Scripture. Huh? The beginning. Huh? And there, the Holy Scripture is trying already to show to us the presence of a God, a Lord that, that is Trinity. Hmm? Look at that. The Lord appeared to Abraham. Looking up, Abraham saw three men standing. It is a reference, a very clear reference to the Holy Trinity. And we can see that the attitude of Abraham of having a lot of hospitality with them didn't pass unnoted. Huh? He was blessed by that. Because we can see, well, we know his history. He and Sarah, his wife, they were married for a long time and they had no children. And at, in that time, at, at that time, in that place, in that culture, not to have a children was something like not to be blessed by God. That culture. Hmm? And then they were living with that sadness. But now, because of his hospitality for receiving so well the Lord, represented by the Holy Trinity here, the three men, huh? he was blessed. When at the conclusion of this reading, they say, yeah, one of them said, I surely will return to you about this time next year. And Sarah, your wife, will then have a son. That would be the son of a promise that is made to him now. Because of his hospitality, his kindness. Because in receiving that man, that strange, that Lord, that three persons, huh? he received the own God, the Holy Trinity. And he was blessed by that. He was blessed by that. That is interesting because you know when God created everything and then in the sixth day he created men and women. But I always, I have to, when I was in Brazil now, I had the opportunity of having a time with my uh, confreres from my congregation, kind of a retreat. And we had a lot of uh, conversations, prayers together, and it was good, it was great. And uh, many times in my life I have been preaching that we are created at the image and similitude of God. Yes, that's true. But it's important to us to remember that God is Trinity. Hmm? Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And then, when we see in the sixth day, God says, let us create men and women, hmm? mankind, let us say like that, at our image and similitude. Our image and similitude. We can go there, the sixth day, the Holy Scripture, and you will see that. He doesn't say, at my image and similitude. 
That's it. Our image and similitude. And then that day he dies it, dies it. Men and women created that their image and similitude. And then that day is concluded with a very specific word. At the end of the day, God looked at what they had done, and that was very good. Very good. All the other days, in the conclusion, he would say it was good. And he created men and women at their image and similitude. That was very good. Huh? And then all of us, all of us, we are image of the Holy Trinity. And then when we do like Abraham here, showing hospitality, charity, kindness to someone who needs, who is around us, well, we are doing that to the Holy Trinity. Because each one of us, we are image and similitude of the Holy Trinity. That is what makes us so important and great before God's eyes. And He cares for us. Hmm? Our God cares for us. Let us say that together. Our God cares for us. Yes. He cares for us. He's there with us. And then, just to reinforce that uh, idea of hospitality, the importance of hospitality, we can see in the gospel another experience of Jesus. Martin and Mary, they are the sisters of Lazarus. Okay? And Jesus was visiting them. And both of them, that is interesting to share, to see, to know, both of them were attending Jesus in that moment. Each one in different ways. But if we stop to look and to meditate, to look very well, we can see that they are complementary. They complement each other. Jesus was not just abandoned in a, in a side while they were cooking or preparing other things. No. Mary was there. Martha was preparing like what? Hamburgers or whatever. Something to Jesus to eat, to drink. Huh? Preparing something. And Mar Mary was listening to him. Both giving attention to him. Personal attention. Both things very different but very complementary at the same time. And Jesus, without destroying or depreciating what Martha was doing, says to her, your sister chose the best part that it, 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 it is to be with me. Huh? But what doesn't mean is that you, what you are doing is not important. Yes, it is too. And in our life, sometimes we have to be like Mary, to give a special attention, to sit there, to listen, to talk, to share. In other moments, we have to be like Martha too, to be the one doing the things, provide what is necessary and being there, being there. Huh? Hospitality is big way to opening the doors of our life, of our heart, of our house, to the Lord, to the Holy Trinity who comes. And as we could see in the first reading, it doesn't pass unnoted by God. And our God is very generous. He doesn't let any one of us to pass Without, without receiving our reward, our recompense from Him for our kindness, for our hospitality. And then, today, in this weekend, we are invited to look to ourselves, to question in our life, how am I living my hospitality, my Christian hospitality in my church, in my house, in my work, in my neighborhood, hmm? how am I? What do I need to change in order to be receiving the Lord in the best way we can? I can. Hmm? Ask it to yourself. And let us think about that during this week. The Lord has special things for us. We are important. He cares about us and He counts on us. Amen?
<laughs> and now let us stand and together let us profess our faith, say ye. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnated of the Virgin Mary and became a man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism, <clears throat> and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now with our attitude of trust in our Lord and our God, let us present to him our needs, our prayers, our intentions, our thankfulness. For all who are traveling during the summer weeks, that God will protect them, renew and restore them through this time away, and strengthen their bonds with their loved ones. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who feel barraged by commercials and reasons to buy, that they may realize that their dignity and meaning is found in being children of God rather than in their possessions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are ill, that God's healing spirit will bring them through their illnesses and restore them to wholeness. Let us pray to the Lord. Amen. For a greater spirit stewardship, that the spirit will guide us in sharing of our time, talents, and resources in support of the church and the forgotten in our society. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace, that God will turn hearts from violence in our cities and families and open new opportunities for dialogue and protect innocent children and people from attacks and errant gunfire. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the special intention for the Crawley family whom today's Mass is being offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the personal intentions we have in our hearts, we pray to the Lord. <clears throat> and let us show our thankfulness to our God for so many good things He does for us, saying together, Thank you, Father. Almighty Father, listen to our prayers and attend the eyes if it is your will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. You can take a seat now. This is the moment of our offertory. Let us sing together the offertory song while we present our offerings. Our offertory hymn is number 495 in your Breaking Bread issue. All that is hidden, number 495. Look for me among the dead. 
Pray, brothers and sisters, that your sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O oh Lord, we pray, the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's truly right and just, our dirt and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord. Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God, for in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels, we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. 
and do never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously, make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of our Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. People of God, the mystery of faith. When we Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memory of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished, by the body and blood of our Son, and filled with His Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May He make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph and her blessed spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Gaspar Bertone and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Sean, our bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people we have gathered for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom we have summoned here in our presence. In our compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you, at their passing from this life, give kind and admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. of God, at the Savior's command, let us pray as Jesus taught us, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously, grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Lord, look not on our sins, but on the faith of our church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. So it's a beautiful smile. Mm -mm. Beautiful smile. Yeah. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace with you. Peace with you. People of God, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring your eyes to the everlasting life. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Our 
our communion hymn is number 469 in your breaking bread issue. All is well with my soul. Number 469. The body of Christ.
Let us pray. <clears throat> Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just uh, an information. As you can see, this week, these last three days, uh, our parking lot was practically reformed, repainted. Hmm? And all the spots we had in the side here to the people park, uh, following the orientations of our firemen, huh? uh, we had to take it out to have space to, in an emergency, their truck to be able to pass through here. And then, uh, I know it will take a time to ask to adjust to that, but just remember, it is for our safety, for the good of all of us. Huh? And now we have new places for, uh, I don't know how to say in English. <laughs> yes, handicapped parking, to here, to there. I think Father Jack is not going to like that, because he, one is exactly in the place he likes to, to pray, to place his car. Well, <laughs> but anyway, just for our good, okay? <laughs> then, let us praise the Lord. <laughs> People of God, the Lord be with you. By the intercession of the Holy Spouses, Mary and Joseph, may Almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace to serve the Lord. And have a great weekend and a blessed week. Our closing hymn is number 412 in your Breaking Bread issue. Christ Before Us, number 412. Sir, sir.